ladies and gentlemen, my name is Royce. Welcome back to A Drink With Crazy. And today's beer is uh, Bush Light. <laughs> Again, I can't always have fancy beers. Fancy beers cost money, and I am saving what little fancy beer I have left, uh, at least one or two of them, for reading your comments, because uh, that's the video that I will be doing uh, shortly after this one goes live. So what should we expect from the Ripaverse comics in terms of themes? I've been thinking about this a lot lately, and themes have been something that have been on my mind quite a bit. And as far as themes go, there are things that always draw me in and things that always make me remember the stories and come back to the stories. And... Although I think we're going to see some really awesome badassery, I want to see themes in the Ripaverse that will be timeless. Something that I think a lot of DC and Marvel stuff has lost uh, throughout the stories, uh, throughout the years that they've uh, told them, and, well, they just think that they can do better than this than these ideas that we've been passing around for thousands of years in our oldest stories. The first one is that of friendship and camaraderie. I think that this theme is quintessential to any story and making you feel what a character is. Making sure that they never leave those who are close to them Aside, making sure that they're always there for another person, making sure that they rise to the challenge when it comes to defending those that are closest to them. That gets into the next theme that I want to see is that of loyalty. That's something that's been tested throughout time and not only that, but it is a theme that we've seen in some of the greatest stories ever told. Lord of the Rings is one of them. Tolkien knew this. Tolkien knew that loyalty and camaraderie were absolutely quintessential to that of the human experience and that which we look up to. We've also seen loyalty in Star Wars when it started out, and hell, even in the prequels. You know, the loyalty to Qui-Gon Jinn is why Obi-Wan trained Anakin. I've seen loyalty throughout various different themes or, or various different stories in my life. Supernatural. The loyalty of those two brothers was fantastic of Sam and Dean Winchester. The next thing that always draws me into a story and something that I hope can be incorporated into the story is that of bravery in the face of fear. Some of the greatest heroes that we have ever, ever, ever seen are brave in the face of fear. Even though everything in them tells them that they can't continue because of whatever's in front of them, they still push on. They still put their boots on, strap up, and get ready to go. These are some of the themes that have always brought me back to some of the greatest stories. It's one of the reasons that, you know, the Green Lanterns, that's why I like Blackest Night. I think Blackest Night's probably one of the greatest stories that DC has ever told. And again, I listened to, you know, uh, uh, like the motion comic book, a couple of uh, comic book YouTubers that covered the entirety of Blackest Night. And I listened to that story and, and saw the themes underneath it. And what made that story so impactful for me was bravery in the face of fear. It was so fantastic. In fact, it's one of the things that makes the Green Lantern Corps just so awesome. Another theme that I absolutely love to see is never-ending, unyielding devotion to your cause. That's why the Thor, uh, God of Thunder, and uh, God Bomb, I, I think, correct me if I'm wrong on that, um, where they introduced Gore the God Butcher. 
It's why Thor was so devastating in those stories, because he never gave up. He never said die. And that is something that I think is so quintessential. We've also seen it from other characters. I'm currently watching uh, My Hero Academia because so many people have talked about My Hero Academia for years. In fact, that's why I didn't upload a video yesterday is because, well, one, I was so tired that I fell asleep in my chair uh, because apparently I'm old. <laughs> and because I've been watching My Hero Academia and just really enjoying the themes of that show. And it was actually that that sparked this idea. What more could I say about the Ripperverse before it comes out? I'm sure that there's a lot. But I think that these themes and these elements are the things that draw those connections to us, right? Because we read these stories not because we want to live in reality, but because, at least for me, I always think it's fun to look at these heroes and draw inspiration from them and realize what more I can be as a human, what more I can accomplish, those, those, those things that need to be hammered out in one's character and personality. And through some of these timeless tales, we understand more of ourselves. Not just the, not just the, the, the Roman gods and stuff like that, because those guys are just... Yes, we remember those stories because they're kind of told to us through history and from where we came from. But those aren't the ones that we like to tell. Those aren't the ones that we like to, to, to think about. The one of the movies that makes me think about all of these themes combined together is Tombstone from 1993, I believe. I believe it was the 19. I, I believe it was 1993. Kurt Russell, Val Kilmer, Sam Elliott, and a host of other fantastic actors and actresses. It is somewhat historically accurate, not entirely, because you know it's a movie, but it's as close as it could be. And my God, when you watch that. And you see the loyalty that they had, the camaraderie that they had. I, you think about it. Doc, why are you here? Because Wyatt Earp is my friend. Well, hell, I got lots of friends. I don't. Lines like that, themes like that, those things that bind the characters together and make us realize what we want in our own lives and should strive for in our own lives. Is this something that Eric July is going to go for? I don't know. I know he is not going to beat us over the head with politics, even his personal politics, which I agree with a lot of. But themes like this. The, I want something to look up to in characters again. I want something to look up to when it comes to our our mythos our modern american mythos that seems to be devastatingly de distraught right now and i hope and i hope this is something that can be achieved through the ripperverse or something that he's at least looking into i don't know Maybe I'm a little over the top on this one. I could absolutely be wrong. And I hope that... I hope that I am pleasantly surprised when I get my copies of Isom number one. I know that they're being shipped out, and I will do an unboxing video, I guess, an opening video. Um, I don't know if I would do a live stream. I don't know. Would you guys be interested in a live stream? I, I have no idea. I know... Live streams tend to, like, you have to pull them down and then put them on a different channel because YouTube sucks. Because it would, it literally, like, the way that the algorithm would work is, like, I would do the live stream and if I left it up on the channel, it would literally, like, remove my channel from being seen from even the people who subscribe to it. So let me know what you guys think. But no, I've been thinking about themes and, and what makes me so entranced in characters. And actually, My Hero Academia, I was I'm on the I, I was on the fence with it up until a certain few moments. 
But because it had those themes, because it had those things oozing out of it, I gave it a chance and I kept giving it a chance. And there were some things I'm like, man, really? I just, I don't. But again, those are the things that draw me into the story. Those are the things that are impactful and passionate and powerful and the things that get us motivated in the morning. And I want to see it. So let me know in the comments below, what do you guys want to see from the Ripperverse? What themes and elements are you looking for? What themes and elements do you think that Eric July is going for? Let me know because I fucking love talking to you guys. Even the one guy that said my nerd wall needed work. And I was a little sassy with him. And I'm actually going to do a video on my nerd wall and go through everything that's up here. If you guys would like that, I don't know. I'm going to do it anyway. I want to do it. And if you guys like the content here and you like what I'm doing and like what I'm talking about, subscribe to the channel. Share it. Hit the share button. Seriously, that breaks YouTube. YouTube, they don't know what to do with that. They have seizures every time somebody hits the share button when they're trying not to recommend a channel because they don't understand why it's so... Why, why this video is getting shared and outside people are coming in. Share this video with everyone that you know. And I will see you all next time right here on A Drink With Crazy. Cheers, everybody. Thank you for watching A Drink With Crazy. If you liked the conversation, make sure to click here to see more.